you know, I'm rubbing my hands, I'm laughing, I've got a, you know, spirit of joy tonight. The reason is that I haven't got a clue what we're going to be doing. <laughs> And Mark's with me and he's in the same boat. No, but, you know, I think that God, I just said before we came live on it, I said, you know, God's going to do and touch somebody's life tonight. And that's what we've got to believe, you know. Uh, scripture says if we open our mouth, the Holy Spirit will fill it. And uh, he needs to do that big time tonight. Now, I was thinking what to share, what to start the ball rolling. But let me just explain. The Late Show, uh, which it is, is an hour-long program. And uh, we open up the... the the communication lines, and that's with the email, live at revelationtv.com. So if you have any questions that you want to put, <laughs> Mark will answer them, and I'll try and help him. I'll ring up Derek Walker live on telly. <laughs> you will. <laughs> OK. Or I'll ring Grady, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, call a friend. <laughs> call a friend. <laughs> Phone I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> uh, and obviously the text number as well uh, is on the screen. Now, if you're a long way away from us, do you know, it's, talking about a long way away from us, do you know, one of the stats that really amazed me is that uh, there's two places in the world that has the biggest viewers uh, we have uh, on the online, okay? I've no idea where you're going to say okay. They're already getting us, you know? Uh, you'd never guess that, you know, online means that they're not watching us on terrestrial or yeah. off a satellite. Yeah. Have a guess. I'm going to guess somewhere outrageous like Pakistan. You cheeky monkey, how did you do that? As a complete guess, because it's, it's the complete opposite of what I was thinking, so I thought, let's really? go. Really? What were you thinking? Well, I'm thinking of somewhere big, like America or somewhere, and I yeah. thought, no, let's, oh. let's go somewhere where they're, they're a bit underground, they'd have to be a bit underground. Pakistan. Is that true? Oh, absolutely. Wow. An amazing okay. amount. I, I don't know the figures. It must be five, at least. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> One of them's a cat. <laughs> I'm not I'm really joking. But uh, a million I was talking about. Wow. No, 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 it's get out of it. I don't know what, the, but it, it, staggering amounts of people are watching us in Pakistan. Guess where the second most... Oh, I have to go somewhere else. I think I've got a this. A bit, bit weird. Oh, well, um, yeah, it have to be a bit weird. Burma. So you say Birmingham. <laughs> Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. 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 Think along the same sort of lines of whatever led you to go to Pakistan. OK. India. No. No, OK. You got me? OK. Turkey. Oh, OK, right, that... I think that's the next one. That actually doesn't surprise me, yeah. 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 Now, the other one that used to be uh, the most, uh, you know, the highest country that was watching as the figures were, uh, quite staggering, and that was Iran. No. Yeah. Wow. Oh, are we Muslim or something? <laughs> Maybe I'm, I'm quite dark, aren't I? Yeah. yeah. You know, Got a big but beard. it's really encouraging, because that I is. know that people who are watching us, I, I believe, for the right reasons, not for um, terrorist reasons, uh, in order to harm us, but people who are perhaps finding it difficult to share with others when they start to look into the Bible and come to know the Lord for who he really is and his son, okay? Uh, and therefore their hunger hungry to learn more about him so if you're watching tonight in any of those countries or anywhere in the world that especially uh, is a hardship for you uh, particularly where there's high persecution of christians uh, please do email us or text us but of course i've got to say this as well i have a, a, a dear friend who's been in ministry for many many years uh, he's an ex-muslim himself and came to the lord many years ago 20 30 years ago <coughs> i must have known him now and uh, he cannot use his phone to, to contact me. He says, look, I'm going to be in one of the countries where uh, they would actually put him in jail if they could find any connection on his phone between, um, I suppose, somebody who's a, a Christian or a Christian yeah. organisation like Revelation TV. And so, therefore, even on his WhatsApp, he, he won't have it all cleared. He, and he says, silent. Don't, don't talk to me. Wow. Um, otherwise he'd be arrested. And so, you know, it just shows you the freedom that we have, just about. <laughs> yes, there's the key. Yeah, just about have enough freedom these days to um, be a Christian in a post-Christian uh, era or country that we're in now. It's not Christian in that sense. I think what... <clears throat> 
people need to understand as well, when we talk about being a Christian, I'm not talking about a nominal Christian, somebody who just goes to church even. Uh, I mean, with all due respect, our Prime Minister goes to church, but how she got arrived at some of the things that she's arrived at uh, and thinking that, well, she can't understand the scriptures or she's not adhering to scripture. Therefore, when she goes to church, she's probably ignoring or having her ears tickled by her uh, preacher or pastor or vicar or, or minister because um, uh, far from it. So it's not about just uh, being a Christian in name. And in fact, what scriptures come to mind when you think about that? I love yeah. this game. When you, you, you ask me a question, it could be anywhere in the Bible, and yeah, I have to sit here guessing. Yeah. <laughs> I, love, well, only, I love that game. There's only 1,500 pages or so, <laughs> you know what it is. Um, yeah. But you're Mark the cabbie, you know, you, you know. There was that famous guy in the 70s, wasn't he? He was a cabbie, he was mastermind. And oh, I Fred Housego. That's it. Fred. You know, I always think, hey, there you go, Mark go. <laughs> you, you know the Bible. But let me give you a little bit more oh, of a clue. It on, yeah. talks about them having a form of godliness. But denying its power. There Romans are. 8, 1. Is it? Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. I think I it's think somewhere. I think it's Timothy 3. Oh. 16. Do you want to have a look? I'm not to show you what, but I mean, just <laughs> because that's a great scripture. Yeah. Because I think... Having so a form of godliness, but denying... Yeah. Blasphemous. 2 Timothy 3, 16, isn't it? There you go. See? Got you there. See, that's not bad. If you think about it, all those scriptures that are in the Bible, and it only took you a couple of times to get there, that's pretty good. Uh, but that's an excellent scripture. Do, do you want, should you read it out as well? Because I'm sure somebody's going, as I say, somebody's going to be two, two, three, ministered three, to tonight. It is somewhere around there. Is, you keep talking, Howard, I'm going to find two, it. Well, it's, it starts from um, in the last days or something, isn't it? Men will become lovers of themselves. Ah, that'll be two, Timothy. Maybe in the last days, perilous times will yeah. come. Men will be lovers of themselves, yep. money, okay. boasters, proud, yep. blasphemers, disobedient, disobedient to parents, parents, unholy, unthankful, unloving, Disloyal. unforgiving, Disloyal. slanderous without self-control, despisers of good, brutal. That's coming through now. Yeah, traitors, right. headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness no. but denying Bingo. power. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. You know, mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, do you, how would you apply that to um, someone who thinks they're in the faith, you know, as a Christian, they go to church, but they're not, they have a form of godliness, a form of faith, but they prove false to the power thereof in, in English terms today, but their, their faith, they deny their faith really because it's not based on the Word of God. They just have a, oh, I'm a Christian. Howard, what's happening now is we're, we're paying lip service to true faith. Um, it, I won't say the name, but our very first church that Vicky and I attended, we received a little card through the letterbox literally this week uh, from the vicar, um, just asking it, it, all around the village, every, every door, just saying we are blah, blah church and we're offering prayer for any once, this, that and the other. All very lovely, really, really nice. But the thing that made me absolutely fall back in horror was that the quote that the vicar had put on this card, I won't even say the quote, because you might not even know who it is, but the quote is from someone who is alive now, living a totally debauched and ungodly life, totally denying the Lord. And I sat there and read this quote, and I, and I just thought of the wheat and the tares, mm. and how God's going to come, the wheat's going to grow up with the tares, and at the end, God's going to divide, you know, sheep, mm -hmm. goats, good fish, bad fish, mm -hmm. the wheat and the tares, they're going to be with us. And the, the church now is so infiltrated with the world that you can barely discern any difference. Mm -hmm. And I looked at this quote, honestly, it, it is off the charts. You might as well have had the, the Ayatollah Khomeini given a quote on this yeah. thing, you know, and I was, I was shocked. Even I was shocked, and I've seen it all. Um, mm -hmm. We're paying lip service, Howard. And what we're doing, we're rejecting the authority and the inerrancy of the Word of God to such an extent now that, you know, we are just making out as we go along. And, well, it's like that, uh, who's that? The vicar that's literally given, I think it's her church, over to, to Islam so they can celebrate Ramadan and she's, she's offered to cover up the Lord Jesus Christ in there and cover up the cross and this oh, and really? that. Oh, and there's uproar, there's absolute, absolute uproar. And 
How would we, we as a church now, have kowtowed to the world so much that we are lit literally looked upon just now as a, as a social club uh, and nothing else, literally nothing else. And God always uses a remnant and you, when you bump into someone that you know is really following the word of God, really following the word, you hold on to them because there's not many of them. There really isn't many. And if you look at the um, verse 16 in chapter, in that same chapter, uh, Timothy 2, 3, yep. <clears throat> it's talking about all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. Okay, all scripture. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> not just the odd passage here or there. And you can't say, well, this isn't inspired of God. It was written 2,000, no, actually, some of it was written 4,000 years ago, three and a half, 4,000 years ago, and some of it was written a couple of thousand years ago. So which ones do I want to accept? I tell you what, I don't like that one. Uh, oh, that looks good. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, let's go with that one. God loves... The world. Everyone. Yeah. And, yeah, so, but when he says, don't do this, don't do that, please don't... And it's not like he's wearing the big stick, I agree, or saying that, you know. He wants us to prosper in health yep. and in every way possible. Yep. And when we look at scriptures, even starting, and I was thinking about this, just my Bible was falling apart, I've got bits. bits falling out of it. Um, when you look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, it talks about what God gave us as food. Okay, and that was all the seed bearing. Um, Trees, yeah, and herbs. leaves and herbs and yeah. things like that. And <clears throat> I, when you look at the way some people live today, I know the, when the flood came, God allowed us to eat meat after that, but we didn't eat it before. And uh, you know, it was because all the vegetation was destroyed in the flood. Uh, but when I, I'm st I've just read a book, which is a miracle for me, honestly, dyslexic, yeah. uh, I am. And the only book I've ever read, really, from beginning to end, uh, I, probably four or five in my life, but the first one was the Bible. This one I read uh, the last couple of weeks. Uh, Leslie, my wife, gave it to me. And it's called Blue Zones. And it's phenomenal, the correlation between what people eat and the, what they drink, um, also their environment, and all sorts of factors uh, to reach an age of uh, 100, for example. And they were looking for these groups of people which were in different lands across the world. Not too many, but they did this research to find the common denominators. A lot of it was on the sort of food that they ate, which was mainly uh, plant seed based, uh, stress-free, um, they were joyful, they were in a community where there was uh, a feeling of uh, commitment to each other. That, and do you know what came out as well as one of the top ones was that they had faith. Is that true? In God. Yeah. It, wild, isn't it? And they also had something positive. Every morning when they got up, they more, you know, some of them were interviewed, obviously, who actually said things directly like, you know, when I get up, I, uh, I, am, I have a purpose I'm, that I'm going to fulfill. That's the key. They go to bed uh, at a reasonable time. They get up at a, an early hour and, uh, and they're active. There's the key. Okay. There's so many of uh, these factors. And, and, and I was just looking at that again in uh, Genesis 1.28. And I'm coming back to this because the, by, going back to that other scripture, I'm hopping about a bit here, that all scripture is beneficial uh, for us. Not just some, but if we don't follow them, it's on our, the onus is on us. Uh, God sets these things. He says, eat this, don't eat that. I mean, like pork. I mean, I know th times have changed a little bit, but it was very dangerous to eat pork anyway in the, those days, uh, particularly where there was no refrigeration, etc. But also there's something inside of a pork uh, flesh that is uh, quite damaging to us, can be. But all right, but... God just says, don't eat it, you know? If you want to eat the scavengers, uh, that's fine. Um, but best not to if you're going to eat meat. And, oh, that was the other thing. I'm, I'm hopping about because I want us to see that God loves us and cares for us, and he's not just a big ogre with a stick or an ogre with a big stick. Uh, and 
the things that we do, we have choices, right? But these, quite a lot of them are based on scripture. And when these centenarians, that's what they're called, okay, over a hundred, they, uh, they wanted to believe in a God because it gave them a sense of, uh, I, I don't know, belonging, caring, and they cared for each other in their communities, and they wanted to do good to, the, to others. And also, if the children were a bit wayward, they didn't have a problem going, Oi, Johnny. Oh, you know, so, and there was knowledge. Don't you tell my son. Yeah. You know, which you'd get today, yeah. wouldn't you? Authority. Yeah, but there was a Kids big crave authority. A sense of responsibility within the community. Yes. Uh, so all of these things were factors. And I'm saying the scriptures are there. All scripture is inspired of God. Yeah. Beneficial for approving, for setting things straight. Now, yeah. If you like, you know, when you've got a diversity of Christian organizations and they don't all sing from the same song sheet, literally, they don't all believe in scripture or the it's been the inerrant word of God, they will fail or fall by the wayside. And that's why uh, uh, scripture goes in and say, and they will, um, what was it? How does it express it? They will. They will. <laughs> Let's have a little look. Having a form of God, godliness yes. but denying its power? Yeah. yeah. The power in the Word of God or in following the Word of God. They is, nullify it, don't they? They nullify yeah. it. Well, they nullify it, they yeah. take, you know, which is to their own detriment. Yeah. And, and I think one of the things that helps help me to understand and identify which church or which belief system am I going to go with, even within Christianity, because it's no good going to a church that's going to be just tickling your ears or telling you a load of pack of lies. Oh, no, you don't need to believe that anymore. Jesus loves us all and he's all forgiven. Yeah, there is that in it. Yep. But if we don't see in ourselves that we are a sinner, yep. that's the key. Most people say, oh, no, it's all right. God loves us. And he does accept us as we are. He does. <laughs> he has to, unfortunately, because yes, yeah. we are um, a motley crew. Yeah. But... If we know the Word of God, and that's why I would encourage every Christian, everybody, whether you're a Christian or not, in fact, there are people like Dr. Grady who read the Word of God, it took him 18 months to come to an intellectual belief in the Scripture, not an emotional one, an intellectual one, and it's then when he, after 18 months of reading that, and for me it was two and a quarter years reading this, that I realized that, you know, there was, it was beneficial for me to follow the scriptures and the admonitions that we have in there, you know, now you've got to take it on the cheek. Absolutely. Huh? But it's for our own good. Yeah. That discipline in righteousness is for our benefit. Yeah. But not a lot of people like to be disciplined. Are you telling me what to do? I mean, I had a bit of that attitude. Yeah. God, are you, that's me you're talking about there. When I read the things that I was doing wrong. Yeah. You know, Howard, I was, I was very lucky. The Lord convicted me so much so quickly and I just, I had no fight to put up against it because I knew he was right. I, I, I was very lucky that he just convicted me quick, done, mm. full, you know. And where a lot of the church goes wrong now, Howard, we, we just focus on love. Jesus mm. loves everyone and God loves everyone and love, love, love. We all talk about love till the cows come home, which is true. But Philippians 1.9 says, Paul speaking, and this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment. And what we talk about is knowledge, knowledge of the truth, you yeah. know? Love without truth is not love. You can't go around affirming people in their sin, thinking that you're loving them because actually you're condemning them to an eternity where they will not want to be. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. God is love, Jesus is God. So Jesus is love, but he is also truth. And what we've done is we have separated them to such an extent now that we've completely left um, any, any thought of truth and reality um, by the wayside. And we've just focused on love and God loves everyone and everyone's going to heaven, we all get saved and blah, blah, blah. There is no standards and that's it. And we've yeah. gone down that wide path, you know? Right. And anyone that's tries to stay on the narrow path, um, is often looked at as a bit of a fundamentalist. Yeah. You know, a um, bit of a legalist, mm -hmm. you know? And legalism is wrong. Absolutely, we're under grace, not under law. And the moment, that, the moment that we try and please God by the law, we step out of grace. Amen to that. Yes. Amen to that. 
Um, mm. I've, been, I've been on that road myself many times, trying to please God by my doing stuff, and it's already done. But there is a balance to be had, Howard, and that balance mm. is quite hard to hit. Yeah. You know? And again, Jesus said, uh, to follow on with what you were uh, communicating there, was that that narrow road is cramped and few, few are the ones who find their way. So it's not an easy road, is it's it? It's not. Okay. Do you know what, Howard, I always say it. My kids, if they're watching, they will laugh at this exact moment because the Bible says, Jesus says, strive to enter through the narrow gate. Mm -hmm. And the Greek word there, strive, is argonidzomai, from which we get agonise. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if you believe in easy believism, well, it's not the Jesus of the Bible because Jesus says, agonise to enter through the narrow gate. You don't fall into salvation. You don't accidentally turn up and, all, oh, look, I'm here. No. You make a conscious decision, which is prompted by the Holy Spirit, who convicts you of your sin, mm. and you say, that narrow gate, Howard, is not wide enough for two people to come hand in hand. You come, you leave all your baggage there, and you come one by one through that narrow gate, knowing that you are not worthy apart from his, his blood. Uh, and his grace. Amen. Wow. OK, is there, if there's any emails or anything, we're open for offers <laughs> tonight. You know, so uh, live at revelationtv.com. Yeah, it's all out there. Got a little question here. Um, right, Howard, get your thinking. Oops. Get your thinking mind on. I thought I was going to have the night off. Got mate. one here. <laughs> got, got one here from John. <coughs> Hi, guys. What do you think the following means? Uh, for there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three are one. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so easy. I could even get my driver to do that, answer that one. That's what Barry Smith did. That, Is that uh, what he, he did? He had a night off. Oh, he did? Yeah, and he, he said to the before. driver, he said, you do tonight. He said, you've heard this a thousand times. <laughs> a thousand times. Okay. Okay, whether or not this is metaphorically speaking or whatever, but anyway, so the driver is doing the sermon for Barry Smith, you know, and answering all the questions, because he knew them all by then, you see. And Barry's in the back there, and uh, the, the driver gets an awkward question just like that, you know. He said, you know, that is so simple. He said, I'm going to ask my driver to answer that, and it was Barry. <laughs> Now that is, Sorry. we can't yeah. do that tonight, how can no, we? <laughs> we haven't got a driver. Okay. Do you well, know what? I've where is it? Feeling, I've got a feeling it's in one Peter somewhere. Oh, he hasn't even given me the reference. No, he's oh, not. Oh, well, we've got the night off then. <laughs> we have got, do you know what, Howard? It, Say it again though, but I, that's yeah, a different um, one. There must be metaphors for the Holy Spirit, uh, Father God and the Son, surely. Um, there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit, and there are three, and these three are one. So there's God. Yeah. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree as one. Where is it? Is okay. it well, 1 Peter? The only th thing I can think about, the, sp the spirit is the Holy Spirit, the yep. water is, was it the water that came out of his side? Ooh. After he'd been, because it followed with the blood, it was mingled with the water, yep. and he was speared? I yep. don't know. Maybe. We're washed with the water of the word, aren't we? Yeah. You know? There are different metaphors for the Ask water. Ask him what the answer is. Yeah. <laughs> John, yeah. John, ring back on Thursday when Howard's got <laughs> no, no. Grady. Do, do tell us the answer, uh, and then you so can come find and this. sit in the hot seat. I can't find where it is. I can't remember. There you go. Yeah. If you could give us the scripture, because we will have the context then as well. Do you know what? On Peter five. Yep. No, can't find it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Thanks for ruining our night, John. Yep. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> do join the other channels as soon as you can. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, well, hi, Howard and Mark. What do you think about the church in Darlington that has agreed to cover up the crosses? This is what I was saying earlier. Darlington, that's where I was... Is that where you were... Yeah! Oh, Howard. After they invited the I... local Muslims to use the building during Ramadan. Oh, my God. Now, I won't name the church. I, don't, I won't shame them too much. No, no, because not only that, we can't... We need, need confirmation. Yeah. Um, they're, 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 they're not just in Darlington. They're everywhere. They're everywhere, aren't they? We're, yeah. yeah. Well, it's really think, nice Howard? to be accommodating and to also to extend love and friendship. I'll probably get into trouble for this, but I'll tell you, because I'm always in trouble. So what, I, I'm, my whole life's in trouble. Do you know, ever since I was born, I was in trouble. I was born with long hair all down my back, and uh, they cut it off and I got the pneumonia. That's what my mum said, you know? <laughs> you know? And then I had it a couple of more times, and they said, if you have it one more time, you'd die. I went to school, and I went to school in a kilt in the... In Darlington, I mean, you don't take... Freezing you, in January. No, it's not that. You don't do that to a boy. I'm I was thinking of the weather. 
we'd been living in Scotland and my mum, you know, came with her Scottish ways to Darlington and I'm going uh, to school in a kilt. I mean, can I've you imagine what you'd do to you? Right? Yeah. What they would do to you? Yeah, I can imagine. I can absolutely yeah, imagine. I think I came home with no knickers, you know? Anyway, the thing is, because you, you have to wear a, a sporran and yeah. green knick knickers and things. But I I'm came, not an expert on I came <laughs> through everyone's backyard, so I didn't go through the streets because I was all through everybody's gardens and stuff. It was awful. Was... Anyway, I blame you. Then mom. the rest of my life was being the same. At school, I got into trouble for all the things I didn't do. I don't, I'm, I'm still as guilty today, <laughs> according to everybody else out there. But and anyway. Even the guy in McDonald's hates this? you, doesn't he, remember? Huh? Even the guy in McDonald's hates yeah, you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Private yeah. joke, guys. Yeah, Private yeah. joke, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Right. Um, where was Place we? in Darlington that has covered up the crosses, yeah. et cetera. So Darlington, bless them. You know, how, <clears throat> I don't know. What can we say? Yes, be accommodating. Oh, yes, now I was going to tell you why. Oh, I'm going to get into trouble again. When we were in Cleveland Street, uh, we had the Muslim Channel. It's called The Muslim Channel. I remember it next door, wasn't it? Next door. Yeah. Now, the CEO of that organisation and myself and our guys, we got on really well. Very well. Um, he, I once interviewed him on our channel and he interviewed me on his channel. And, but he did say I, he was surprised how many Muslims were watching our channel. He said, you got more viewers than I have. <laughs> <laughs> Because we did it all unannounced, so it wasn't like, you know, watch tonight because we've got the, yeah. the Muslim, the CEO of the Muslim channel. But there was a time <clears throat> when there was Ramadan. And they had a, a, a technical problem. And they came to me and they said, well, you, you need something. Because I'd always, if there was any way I could help them with something. Anyway, I, I lent them a bit of kit that allowed them, I set it up for them, to actually get the Hajj. Uh, come through, you know the thing that uh, know, happens I, once I know a year. About the yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, am I doing the right thing here? But I, I did it out of love, and I obviously, you know, <laughs> disagree with a, a, a lot of the uh, theocratic things. But I, I did it just because it was a nice thing to do, and I also so in that sense I can understand. But I wouldn't cover up Jesus, yeah, just to accommodate them. But then, you know, the other interesting thing with that guy, we got on so well together that when we left Cleveland Street, do you know, he said to me, he said, where are you going, Howard? I said, I, said, um, I think I'm going to go take the, the studio to our home. He said, Cause, he said I want to come with you. We'll really? come with you. No. Wherever you go, we'll come with you. And I thought, that was really nice. How about that? That just comes back to mind. I don't know whether oh. they'd feel the same today, to be honest, but, yeah. but that was really nice, wasn't it? <laughs> she's we, we were going into a big commercial building. He said, oh, I'll come with you. We'll come with you. Wow. Yeah. I'm a bit, Does that really lost for words? Yeah, I do. But that was because we'd built a, a, good, a good relationship. Yeah. Now, the time I was on his channel, I'm deviating a bit here. <laughs> the time I was on his channel, it was a bit difficult because I was the only guy in there probably, they had this like live debate and uh, they were talking about something, I'm trying to remember, but I, I, yeah, I put my hand up and I, I said, why have you got all those things that, that, you know, something about hating the Jews, you know? I said, it says in scripture, you never know, da da da. Cause I was like, oh, what? <laughs> you got the atmosphere with a knife then. But um, anyway, where are we? Answer, answer, oh, yeah. answer yeah. some other questions. Um, we shouldn't answer, yeah, I don't yeah. think we, we don't know what, uh, yeah. the, the full circumstances of Yeah. That. So I can understand wanting to help, but you've got to say who you are and what you are. Absolutely, you know? yeah. yeah. Put your hand up like I did. And Amen. It was like shh, total silence. <laughs> Oops. I can imagine. I'll leave now. <laughs> I'll leave now. <laughs> I'll leave the cup of tea. Yeah. Thanks. Have that next time. But it was lovely to be able to, you know, exchange, you know, switch channels and oh there he is <laughs> and then you got the opposite lovely how are you you only you can answer this next question oh good out of me and you right please can you tell me what jehovah's witnesses attitude to forgiveness is please great program thanks very much oh, wow have you got an extra hour i do yeah go and go now i'll tell you let me preface this with i i bump uh had some witnesses uh, walked past my door the other day. Well, I knew, I just knew, I, I saw them. I said, uh, uh, good morning, gents. 
And he turned around and said, oh, that's a nice greeting. I said, yeah, well, why not? I, know, I know you're Jehovah's Witnesses, aren't you? And they said, yeah, how did you know? I said, chat, chat, chat. And um, they said, chatting away and everything. And I knew they would probably invite me to the kingdom all and everything. I said, look, before you do, I said, I was disfellowshipped a few years ago. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> I said, so you wouldn't want me in, the, in there. Um, anyway, I said, but he said, it was so nice of you to s s give me such a nice greeting. And I said, well, do you know, I just... I, I have great respect for you, I love you. Um, I said, it was such a shame. What ha they asked me what happened in the past, I gave them a talk. I said, and basically, uh, I'd gone to the elders and confessed a sin uh, to them, and uh, they kicked me out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing here. <laughs> no, I shouldn't laugh. Yeah. <laughs> it's only because you're laughing. No. Um, <laughs> so really, they're lovely people, but, you know, they are, and he's laughing as well, but no, they are. And the thing is, when you're disfellowship, people can't speak to you in the congregation. Right. Okay. And I still went to the congregation for many, many months before I moved to Spain, uh, to Spain, to America. And, you, and you've got to declare, if you go to a different congregation, that you are disfellowship, so nobody talks to you. I said, I said, so that's what I did. And after a few months, the guys in America said, look, you know, we're going to apply to the powers that be in England and check, we get you reinstated. I said, I'm, I'm all right. I just come and I listen to the, the preaching and teaching. I don't need to be, I mean, but you know what? They got this reply back and he said, it's not good. And I said, you know what? Don't worry about it. I told you not to, to bother. They, uh, they weren't very forgiving. That's the answer to the question. Yeah. Um, and they thought that I'd planned it all um, and everything, and it was so hurtful. It really was hurtful. Um, and uh, so, as far as, are they forgiving? Not in those days, but they are today. Yeah. Because I know, I've got other people that I know that have, uh, were disfellowshipped and they've reinstated them because they've decided they were too severe. Um, okay, that's quite deep, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah, well, it was sad at the time. I bet it, yeah. I, I it did know quite that. quite hurtful. I did know that story, yeah. so, yeah. yeah. But that, that's my honest answer. But today, I don't bear any grudge, you know, um, or in any way, because there's some lovely people. They are, they are genuinely lovely people. Yeah. Yeah. When they knock at our door, they're always very lovely, you know? Yeah. And you know what, Howard? Um, Jack, my son, is, is in Belgium at the moment. He's in his third year at university. And he's doing a year abroad, six months in Germany, six months in Belgium. And he's virtually fluent in both languages. <laughs> oh, virtually. Wow. And he goes out there, Howard, and his, his first port of call, wherever he's walking to, is to search them out, the JWs on the street. Yeah. And uh, he's tooled up to the eyeballs with... Uh, with all the... he, well, he's, he's got their version of the scriptures. Yeah, so... so oh, he, wow. he doesn't even yeah. bother with ours. Yeah. He, and, he, and he debates them in French. And, uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Oh, Absolutely wow. great. It's amazing. He leaves yeah. me behind, yeah. yeah. He leaves me behind. Yeah. Howard, got one here from uh, our... Can I tell you one other thing? Go on, yeah. The women <laughs> in the church, the older women, used to talk to me. I'd say, don't, you're not allowed to talk to me. Oh, stupid dog, taking it up to those guys. <laughs> was to the elders. But, because uh, they had some compassion, you I know, they could see. Yeah. I mean, I went month after month after month, sitting in the back, um, knowing you weren't allowed to talk. But I wasn't going there for me, but I wanted to learn. I was just willing to learn, you know. Oh, well. but, and I suppose it takes some sort of humility to, to sit there and... And it's good training, because now, I mean, if you look on YouTube, or not YouTube, what do you call it, Google and all that, I'm, I'm the worst thing since sliced bread. I mean, I'm worse than the devil himself, I think. So, I mean, I'm, it was good training going through the witnesses. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose it is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, I knew you'd be able to answer that one. Yeah. Got one here from our, our fellow comedian, Jeff. <laughs> and um, we, love, we love a bit of Jeff. He always cheers up. But he's telling a quite a sh straight down the line one. Hi, fellas. I'm texting you from a place where it's very hard to be a true Christian. No free speech, watered down preaching in the churches, and you could be brought before the courts if I preached on the streets. This where am I? <laughs> where am I texting you from? Turkey, Pakistan, Iran? No. no. Bolton. Yeah. It's oh, wow. getting really bad out yeah. there now. It is getting really, really bad. Yeah. I, well, you knew it was England. <laughs> yeah, you just knew, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's... Um, we don't have any viewers in England. No, we do. We have a few. But it's amazing that we've got people watching us in these far-flung 
away countries which are not traditionally non-Christian, yep. but they want the message. They're hungry for the word of God, the truth, unadulterated truth. Right. Sorry, Howard, I've read the next text. No, it's good. I love a bit of silence. Oh, really? yeah. That's a good bit of program, isn't it? Yeah. Complete silence while yeah. I read the text. Right. Hi, Mark and Howard. Always really enjoy your program. We recently had a magazine through the door from the local church called The Good News. After reading the word from the vicar, I ironically called, uh, was, it was all about the philosopher Nietzsche. I think it's Friedrich Nietzsche, isn't it? Kant and about capitalism. We concluded it was definitely not about the good news of the gospel, as he never mentioned Jesus Christ once. It was purely a social, moral gospel. That's really growing now, isn't it? Mm. I did email him to say he was leading people astray, but had no reply. Blessings from Jill. Yeah, bless you, Jill. Yeah. People seem to have this idea that Jesus came just to give a social gospel. He never. He came to address sin mm. and its eternal consequences. And that basically is it. You know, yes, we're called to help the poor. We're called to help, you know, help the widow and the fatherless. Absolutely amen and amen, but that is not the overriding message. That is not the good news. The good news is that you can have your sin debt paid in full yes. by repentance on the shed blood of Jesus. And it's as simple as that. And it's so hard for man to actually admit he's a sinner. All right. Yeah. You're absolutely it's right, humbling. Howard. Do you know what, Howard? You'll love the next one, because the next time you get really low and despondent, just think of Rachel. Hi, Howie. And Mark, just to say thanks for your channel. I've learned so much and I've been challenged. Your channel has helped me grow closer to Jesus and my faith is continuing to grow. Your channel has been a blessing and encouragement in my life and has helped me through my difficult times. Thank you. Blessings to you all. From Rachel. Mm. Short and sweet. Lovely. Next time you're low, Howard, next time yeah. you've had enough, <laughs> and you're going to chuck the... Give me five minutes. Chuck now. the baby out with the bathwater yeah. and give it all up. Well, yeah. honestly, this is one of the great reasons we do this is, and keeps us going is the fact that we're making a difference. Uh, once that day comes to an end, but then fine, uh, time to go. But until then, we, by God's grace, will keep, um, keep spreading the good news. And the good news is, as you said, and I'm glad you defined that simple, it that it? way. Yeah, it's that simple. Yeah. yeah. It's not, hey, you can do what you like, guys. No, no I know. Right. Here we go. Evening, gents. Regarding the comments Mark made about the church, I relate to that. I attend church from time to time, but I struggle to find a decent place as so many churches have too much of the world, not enough Bible, and a soft gospel mm. message. We are in the age of an apostate church, so what do we do? Um, this is one of the reasons why Rev TV is important to believers. We need the material you're putting out. Keep doing what you're doing. Mm. It's making a difference. Wow. So there you go, Howard. Um, uh, yeah, I'm... I, 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 what was the gentleman's name? The Jehovah one. Uh, no, that was the, that one just now. Got no name on that one. All right. Oh, but you had Rachel before. Okay, no. It was just think. I was just thinking. This of might the be from James, Peter. actually. Yeah, go on. Um, the, the Second Peter three talked about the false prophets and the, all the false teachings as well. Really, uh, Second Peter chapter two uh, says, "But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers among you." who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, obviously with a price, yep. bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Many will follow their sensuality, and because of them, the way of the truth will be maligned. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their judgment from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, that's interesting, right? Yep. But cast them into hell and committed them to pits of darkness reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a preacher of righteousness, with seven others, that's his family, when he brought a flood upon the world of, un of the ungodly. And if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to destruction by reducing them to ashes, having made them an example for those who lived ungodly lives thereafter, and if he rescued a righteous lot, oppressed by uh, the sensual conduct of unprincipled men. For by what he saw and heard, that righteous man, while living among them, felt his righteousness, his righteous soul tormented day after day by their lawless deeds. Wow. Do you know, I, I get something from that. I'm 
not going to expound on it though. Yeah. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the ungodly from temptation. Yeah. Wow. Do you know, I was talking to somebody today in the street for about, it was a, a local trader, I'm not going to yeah. name names, but somebody who's, we had a couple of chats in the past, but he stopped me in the street. We had a chat and we went on and I was thinking, you should be going to work. You, you know, it didn't matter to me because, I mean, I am at work when I'm talking yeah. about the gospel. Yeah. And uh, he was a very intelligent man as well, I have to say, because of certain things that he's studied and, you know, what he's got degrees in and things. Yeah. But we were talking about some of this and the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from temptation and to keep the unrighteous under punishment uh, for the day of judgment. I was trying to say, we were talking, it's, it's very hard because you've got to be careful, um, but we were, I was saying, I have, I struggle to keep myself right. Join okay. the club. Okay. Oh. And whether it's in D, thought, whatever. Join the club. And I, and I think it shocked him when I was saying this. And I said, but you know, that's what it takes because we need, uh, you know, deliver us from evil, you know, is part of that Lord's Prayer, isn't it? Yep. You know, lead me not into temptation. And these sh show us that we, we're only human and we cannot do it on our own strength. And we need that um, sort of, knowing that God is on our side and it will help us to overcome this. What does it say? The Lord knows how to rescue the godly from temptation. And I, I thank God for that particular scripture tonight because it helps me. Yes. Because it is a struggle sometimes. You know, it's so easy to do what is wrong or to do what you think you want to do. You've got to go, no, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. I don't know how many saints there are out there, but if it's a few of you that are feel like Mark and I, you know, yeah. God help you because we're, it is a struggle. And, I, and uh, people who know what I'm talking about know what I'm talking yeah. about. Do you know how it says? Fight the good fight of faith, isn't it? The unregenerate are not aware of the powers of darkness. They're not aware of a spiritual battle because they're not in one, because they're already under Satan's dominion. But because Colossians 1, you have been rescued from Satan's dominion into the kingdom of the Son of God's love, Christ, mm. now you're in a perpetual battle because you're aware of it. Mm -hmm. And so now when you see a, a pretty woman or this or that and your flesh is moved and your flesh is moved no matter who you are, whether you're the Archbishop of Canterbury or Dr. Robert Runcie, or it doesn't matter who you are, you're, we're all fallen flesh. Yep. But now you realise it. That is why now you realise because the veil has been taken from your eyes, you are actually in a battle. But the Bible calls it the good fight of faith. Mm. And 1 Corinthians 10, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 10 I think, talks about no temptation has beset you that is not common, common to man. man. But yeah. with, with the way, he will provide a way of escape, yeah. which is virtually always grace. So when you're fighting how the, the, the impulses, the mm. flesh and this and the lust of the eyes and blah, mm. you're in a fight that mm. many, many generations of people have been in. And you only know it's a fight because you've been gifted with salvation. Virtually none of my mates are saved, virtually none. So whenever they're in the calf and they see a, a lady walk down the street, five mm. heads turn, mm. my head looks, my head looks away, five heads stay, I'm in a battle because I mm. realise it. So mm. God's able to deliver you, Howard, never ending. Yeah. Well, the next few verses are also um, very, very apt, I think. Let me read on after um, verse 9, which I just read. Verse 10 goes on to say, and especially those who indulge the flesh in its corrupt desires and despise authority. Mm. I suppose really talking what you're talking about, but also the authority is God's word in here. You see, this is what the word says, is to turn your eyes away, okay, or to, not to indulge in the flesh. Daring, self-willed, they do not tremble when they revile angelic mad Majestic, majesties. Majesties, yeah. Whereas angels who are greater in might and power do not bring a 
reviling judgment against them before the Lord. But these, like unreasoning animals, born as creatures of instinct to be captured and killed, reviling where they have no knowledge, uh, will in the destruction of those creatures also be destroyed. I think what he's trying to get at is when you look at the other scriptures, you know that sin is crouching at the door, waiting to capture you in one form or another, whatever your weakness is, whatever your a little chink in your armor is. Yeah. You know, it says put on the full suit of the armor. Do you know, if you were uh, in military in those days, you'd look for where am I going to put my arrow into you? And that's often the Achilles tendon, isn't it? And what was it? What's the, t the term for the heel? Achilles heel. Yeah. What is your weakness? Yes. Your Achilles. What is your Achilles weakness? Because that, wasn't it, who, I know it was a Greek myth mythological thing, yes. wasn't it? Yes. I'm not good at your Greek mythology. Yeah. Yeah. Bring up Tim Vince, quick. Go okay. Do it now. Well, yeah, they, they, it was where they were able to get through the armour was just into the just Achilles temper, because okay. where the foot bends. Yes, there's a gap, the, isn't it? Yeah, there's a gap. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, just amazing. I, do you know, I love the Word of God. I mean, you can read anyway. You can just pick it at random. You, you're, never, you're never going to be short of something to talk about, yeah, are you? Absolutely. We started yeah. off with nothing to Literally nothing. Do you know, I'm just, I'm just reminded, apparently Billy Graham would never get in a lift or a car with just a woman. Yeah. Never. No. That's well, why the Bible says not just to walk away from youthful lusts, mm. it commands you to flee youthful yeah. lusts. That is how much Satan knows. Mm. Money, power, sex. Mm -hmm. it, will grab, it will grab anyone, yeah. which is basically rock and roll, isn't it? Yeah, it it's is really. It's exactly the lifestyle that you have, you've been in. You've been there with the big names. I love your stories about yeah. Bowie and all, all, the, all the names. But, so you've literally been delivered, Howard. Well, I've still got it. I'm still going through it. Though. I know you are. I, I know. <laughs> it wasn't over when I was young. What, what I'm saying is position, positionally, mm. you've been delivered. Mm -hmm. Experientially, it's an ongoing work. Mm -hmm. But positionally, if you die tomorrow, yeah. your position is settled. Well, this guy I was talking to in the street, also, he was saying, did you ever get into drugs when you were, um, you know, because he was talking about all the esoteric things. He was so knowledgeable. Yeah. Really, he was amazing. Like, the things on the dollar bill, all the wow. things he was... This is an amazing guy, yeah. you know, just for his local businessman, yeah. you know. In, but, um, yeah, so knowledgeable. Anyway, what was the point? Come back, uh, uh, rewind a sentence. Um, uh, flee youthful lusts, um, rock and roll, been delivered yeah, from... Yeah, yeah, so he said, yeah. drugs, that's it. Well done, that's a good recap. <laughs> um, he said, did you ever get into the drugs in the, the music business? I said, no, that's one thing that I never did. They tried it, and I knew, I said, I didn't want to lose control. I knew they would take me, because I could look at those around me and they were all like off their heads, you know? I can imagine. And then they looked about 20 years older than me and they were only like two or three years older than me. I said, oh, that's a good advert for not getting into that one. You know, it looked like death warmed up and he was only 21. Yeah, not good. He still looks the same today. I don't know how he lasted that long, actually. But anyway, um, so... All of these things, because there's so much druggery out there, and that's another sign of the ends of the times. It is, Howard. The it druggery would increase. Is. And, you know, if we were at war, or if we were to go to war with anybody, like a nation or anything else, you know, we need to go to war uh, uh, against the drug dealers. Yeah. yeah. Okay? Absolutely, Howard, yeah. Because they are killing our generation. And this man, because he has a chemist uh, degree, Okay, as well, was telling me some things about, you know, I've got to be careful because, I mean, it was quite high up in the echelons of power that he, or a friend of his, was actually asked to do, to make these drugs for the police. <laughs> I mean, I'm only, t I'm only saying what I heard, or I can't, can't prove it, yeah. but they knew how to, dis to pass those on. But what, I, what I'm trying to say is the powers that be have done nothing really to deal with the drug. No, they don't and want that's to. what's killing our generation. Yeah, they don't want to. No, because they're involved in it. Yeah. Somewhere along the line. I'm not saying everybody or yeah. politicians. But there is people in high places that are in control and don't want it, don't want to not rock the boat because it's money. And because uh, you think about it, if we'll go to the Falkland Islands. Yeah. 
to save, you know, a few souls there. And we'll go to Iraq and put our nose in there and cause all sorts of problems in Afghanistan and what have you, you name it. We, could we not then make a concerted effort and bring the drug dealers and stop the drugs from killing our, our generation? They don't want to. They don't want to. They don't want to. Thank help. you. Okay. Yeah. Right. Any other? Right, tips? Hal, can I squeeze this one in? Um, Please. I love your quick answer. We're down to our last couple of minutes. Hello, dear. How are you, Mark? It's me again. I'm still worried that I was in the Anglican Church, and as you know, they do confirmation and not water baptism. I was christened age 11, but by choice. But I'm seriously ill now with many illnesses caused by a specialist. Nine years ago, I was, I was getting married and going to Israel to be baptised in the Jordan with my would-have-been husband then. Our lives were ruined, uh, and Ian was my carer instead of my husband. Wow, he left me two years ago to be with another woman, and yet both of us are born-again Christians. There's no way I could be water-baptised now, and I'm worried sick it will stop me being with my Lord and Father. I know I was in the wrong church. Please can you tell me if, if I won't go to heaven now? Devastated and worried part of Rev TV. Kath from England. I remember Kath. How would we... What? For me... Give, give this lady some, okay. some encouragement. Let's go to an example. Yes, go. Philip was in the chariot yes. with the Ethiopian who just visited Jerusalem had come up for the festival. He was talking to him about the scroll in Isaiah because he, this guy was reading it and he couldn't understand it. And he said, oh, just happened to hop onto his chariot, didn't he? Oh, I'd love that, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, just hop on. Hop on. Um, well, the Lord, you see, the Lord directs you and puts you in touch with people. It's like that guy today in the street. It was just, these are not, they're God incidences, not coincidences. Yes. And... Uh, I'm saying this because he said, right, he, he took him through the process, really, to commit his life to God, right? And he said, well, I see no reason why we can't stop now. There's some water nearby and be baptised. It wasn't... I, I, it was like, because it was within reach, it was in their... Uh, it was a, a, they could accommodate the baptism. Yeah. I think that... In, is it Cass? Cass? Yeah, Cass. Cass instant, if she can't literally, physically get in and someone submerge her in water, the Lord knows that. Fine, he knows Absolutely. it. I'm glad you said that, Hal, because that's yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah, my goodness. And her husband leaving her. go, oh, sorry, mate, you didn't go in the water. Yeah, her husband leaving her is not, it's not her Yeah, it's situation. not her fault. It's, it's, yeah, it's, my it's, goodness. You know, yeah. he, will have, he will answer. Yeah. Um, Oh, bless you, Cass. Yeah, I, be I released that. from that. I, I yeah. can't see. Oh, God is a... Is, is, is thicker than water. Absolutely. It's How the blood of Christ. The thief on the cross. Yeah, he didn't get into he the water, did he? didn't jump down and get full, full point immersion point. and run a healing crusade, did he? No. He was dead a few hours later. Yeah. Well, he, probably even minutes later. Maybe even minutes, yeah. 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 Be released of that one, Calf. Yeah. In Jesus' name. You, you, yeah, absolutely. The Lord knows, OK? The Lord understands. Mm. The Lord. We've got less than two minutes, Howard, so... Yeah. Oh, thank God for that. You mean, oh, uh, the programme, you mean? <laughs> Uh, yeah, last couple minutes of the programme. Sorry, are you joking? I was just reading. <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> You've only got two minutes left. <laughs> We're down to the last couple of minutes. Um, yeah, a quick one here from Alan. Hi, Howard. If after the flood there was no vegeta vegetation, where did the dove's olive leaf come from? <laughs> yes, well, it was. Great programme uh, from Alan. Was it 45, 150 days later, whatever it was? It was, was it? actually, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, that was the tops of the mountains. The very tops, yeah. it? And it, by that time, because it took... Oh, several months for the for it to for the waters to subside, and they were at the yes. tops of the mountains, and we know how how high some of those mountains can be. Yeah, absolutely. But the yeah. vegetation was destroyed. That's why he said, "Now you can eat meat." I think it's Genesis nine three. If Is you... it? Yeah, I think so. Okay, well, we, we're, running, now, we're running. We're running down to our last minute. We're running down a bit, but yeah. Do you know there are things like that in scripture where you think, "Oh, got you," you know. <laughs> We got the Lord. It's a mistake. Yeah. You know, he's made a mistake, but there isn't. There's always an explanation. Yeah. All 25 seconds. Yeah. Huh? All of 25 seconds. Well, Mark, you know, bless you. Um, it's yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Mark, bless you. You know, by God's grace, Enjoy. we did pray before we started that God would help us through, and He has. And I just say thank you to the Lord, but just to encourage you all, get into the Word of God, and we have that freedom in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.